Here we're going to look at a nice calculus problem. So we want to show that if f double prime of a exists, so in other words, f is twice differentiable at a, then f double prime of a is equal to the following limit. So we've got the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h plus f of a minus h minus 2 times f of a all over h squared. So this is called the Schwartz second derivative. So just to reiterate what we're showing, we're first assuming that f double prime of a exists. And if it exists, it has this nice limit realization. And in order to prove this limit realization, we're going to use a Taylor approximation for the function f. And so we're going to use a second degree Taylor polynomial. That means that we can write f of x as f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus one half f double prime of a times x minus a squared plus r of x, where that's some remainder function. And this remainder function satisfies the property that when we take the limit as x goes to a of r of x over x minus a squared, we get zero. So this is something that you might cover in like a second semester calculus class. Okay, so what I want to do is take this Taylor polynomial approximation for our function and plug in a plus h and a minus h to see what we get. All right, so let's do that first. So we'll have f of a plus h. In other words, we're setting x equal to a plus h here. So that's going to give us f of a, that constant term is always going to be the same, plus f prime of a. And now we have a plus h minus a, so that's just going to be h. So that's nice. We've got some simplification already. Next, we have 1 half f double prime of a. We'll have h squared for a very similar reason from this. And then we'll have plus r of a plus h. That's our remainder term. And now we'll do essentially the same thing, but we'll plug in x equals a minus h instead. So that'll give us f of a minus h equals f of a plus f prime of a times minus h plus one half f double prime of a times minus h squared plus r of a minus h. Okay, great. But now looking at these two parts, we see that these two parts make up two parts of our numerator here. So it might be worthwhile to find their sum. So let's maybe just go ahead and find their sum and then we'll plug that value into the limit. So notice we'll have f of a plus f of a. That's going to give us 2 times f of a. Here we have f prime of a and f prime of a. One is attached to an h and one is attached to a minus h, so those cancel. In this case, they build up because this is attached to a minus h quantity squared. So that's going to give us a half plus a half, which gives us a whole f double prime of a times h squared. And then we'll have these two remainder terms. So that'll be r evaluated at a plus h plus r evaluated at a minus h. Now we can plug this into our numerator here. Notice we'll just go ahead and take away the 2f of a because that's also in the numerator here and let's see what we get. So that turns this limit into the limit as h goes to 0 of f double prime of a times h squared over h squared plus r of a plus h over h squared plus r of a minus h over h squared. So let's put all of those in parentheses right here. But now we want to go ahead and evaluate all of those limits. So I want to notice that very quickly we can cancel this h squared with this h squared, leaving us with a f double prime of a from the first term. And then because of our Taylor polynomial expansion, we actually know that the last two terms equal zero. And we can see that by taking a easy change of variables here. So let's maybe take a change of variables in this one to take h to be equal to x minus a. And then in this one, we'll take h to be a minus x. 
So notice that's gonna give us the limit as x goes to a of r of x over x minus a squared for the first one. And then that'll be plus the limit as x goes to a of r of x over a minus x squared for the second one. But again, by our assumption involving Taylor polynomial approximation, we know each of these just trends off towards zero, giving us the result that we wanted. Okay, so now we might wanna look at the question of why is this called the Schwartz second derivative and not just the limit definition of the second derivative? And it turns out that there, there's an example of a function that is not two times differentiable where this limit does exist. So we'll go ahead and clean up the board and look at that example. So next we're gonna look at an example where this limit exists, but the second derivative does not exist. And the example that we're gonna look at is this piecewise function defined by x squared if x is bigger than or equal to zero and minus x squared if x is less than zero. So that looks like an upward facing parabola in the right hand half of the plane and then a downward facing parabola in the left hand half of the plane. So it's pretty easy to see that we could take the second derivative here in a piecewise fashion, and we'll see that that's gonna be equal to two if x is bigger than or equal to zero, and it's equal to negative two if x is less than zero. So in fact, we've got something that looks like the derivative of the absolute value function when we take the second derivative here. So I'll let you guys think about the connection if you want to, but, the takeaway here is that f double prime of zero does not exist. So that's important to notice. Now next up, we want to calculate this limit over here on the right hand side, show that this limit does exist, meaning that we really do need this hypothesis in order to prove this following boxed object here. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and calculate this limit as h goes to zero of this where a is equal to zero. So that'll be f of zero plus h plus f of zero minus h minus two times f of zero all over h squared. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on here. So notice that since this has this kind of behavior where it's positive two to the right of the origin and negative two to the left of the origin, that gives us some motivation that maybe we should look at right and left-handed limits here. So let's do that. So let's say if we're approaching h from above, in, order, in other words, positive values of h. So if we're approaching h from above, that means f of zero plus h will just give us h squared and then f of minus h, well, that's gonna give us minus negative h squared. So we'll have minus h squared from that. And then this term over here is always equal to zero just by the definition of the function. So notice when we take this right-handed limit, we'll have h squared minus h squared over h squared, but that's very clearly just zero over h squared. So we get that this is equal to zero. And now in parallel, let's maybe go ahead and take the left-handed limit. So in other words, the limit as h goes to zero from the left, so we're taking negative values of h. So if h is negative, then that means here we have to replace h with minus h squared, and then we'll have plus. So now minus h squared is actually positive h squared. So that's gonna give us plus a minus h squared because we have to use this formula right here. But now notice that minus h squared plus negative h squared also gives us zero. So in other words, this limit does exist. It's equal to zero. This function has the property that its second derivative does not exist, but its Schwartz second derivative does exist and is equal to zero at zero. And that's a good place to stop.